especially after dinner, it's going to enable you to switch off the energy mode, so relax the body, not use so many resources for digestion, and then have a better quality of sleep. Welcome back, everybody. Glad to have you here today. Appreciate the support of the Cabral Concept. Today is 2706. That's today's show. I want to share with you the five big takeaways, if you want to check them out, at stephencabral.com slash 2706. That's today's show notes. Because we're going to be going over five different ways to get into a fasted state faster after meals. The reason why this is important is well, there's many different reasons, but let's at least share the most important ones. So the first one is this. If you're in a fasted state, that means your blood sugar has come back down to baseline. That's typically sub 100, ideally sub 90. Okay, so that's the second part, or that's the first part. The second part is this. Once your blood sugar is back in balance, you're going to be able to burn body fat as a fuel source to a better degree, which is fantastic. The third reason is you're getting get into more of a state of what's called autophagy. Autophagy is your body's ability to clean house. So basically your white blood cells, your macrophages, they can go around, they can clean up bacteria, they can help destroy viruses, they can kill cancer cells, and much more. Three big ways, but especially after dinner, it's going to enable you to switch off the energy mode, so relax the body, not use so many resources for digestion, and then have a better quality of sleep. The last way I wanna share with you today is that it's going to enhance what are called APMK, AMPK pathways, and AMPK pathways enable your body to move more towards that autophagy, but also slow and stop mTOR, while although great for muscle building and improving overall physique transformation, doesn't help you with the anti-aging part of the equation. So essentially what we're looking for is a period of time during your day for anabolism, being rebuilding the body, and a period of time of the day for catabolism. By getting your body back to a state of balance, of equilibrium, after each meal as quickly as possible, ideally within two to three hours maximum, you're gonna be maximizing all of the benefits of current wellness or improving your overall health as well as anti-aging life extension. So I wanna share with you those five ways here today and I'm gonna give them an order that you would implement them at meals. Most of them are free or very close to free, which is always nice. And you can, um, you'll be able to go to the show notes again for all the different resources. Okay, so let's check out the first one. The first one is this. Many people are already doing this, but before a meal, because so much of this has to do with digesting your food to a better degree, not too fast, but actually moving through the digestion phase faster. Because, well, let's stop just for a moment. Let's keep in mind, that after you stop eating, you might count that as, okay, now I'm in a fasted state. You're technically not in a fasted state, okay? So your body is digesting that food. If it's a complex meal, two, three, four hours in your stomach. Okay, now obviously it's moving through within about 30 minutes, that food starts to slowly move through. But it might be three hours, four hours before a steak and a salad you know, may actually be moved through your stomach or a more complicated meal. Okay, but after that, it's in your small intestine and the food is still being broken down then for another three to six hours or so. And then after that, it's basically the process of um, extracting vitamins, minerals, actually making some of those vitamins and minerals inside the small intestine, neurotransmitters and so much more. But let's assume that we're looking at a good six hours you know, of the digestive-based process. But for all, all intents and purposes, if we can move the food through the stomach within about two to three hours time, good chewing of the food, and, and point number one, which I'm about to mention in a moment, let's really, count the, let's really count the fast as starting within a couple hours of the meal once that blood sugar starts to return to baseline. So that's, our, that's really our gold standard of what we're looking for right now because everything else is much more challenging to figure out if the food's in your stomach or not or what part of the small intestine, is it in the duodenum, is it in the um, jejunum, is it in the ileum, right? We're not gonna be able to figure that out. That, that's okay, we don't need to get that granular. All right, so five different ways. The first one starts before the meal, right? Or as the food coming in. You can use digestive enzymes. A good quality digestive enzyme will have lipase, proteases, it'll have cellulase, it'll have hemicellulase. 
all of the different ACEs, which help to break down carbs, fats, and proteins. So typically, you would take your digestive enzyme uh, before meal, 10 minutes before meal. Now, you, people can take two to three digestive enzymes of the meal to help with greater digestion if they choose to. The more complicated the meal, typically the more enzymes you will use. Now, part of this, though, we have to understand is some of them also include bromelain and papain, which I think are great natural digestive enzymes to add in as well. So feel free to use whatever company you love for your digestive enzymes, but if you choose to, you can take one, two, or three digestive enzymes before a meal. Now, I will say many people in our practice, they take everything together mid-meal, and there's nothing wrong with that as well. Ease of use, you take your little handful of vitamins during your meal, and it might have your whatever, your zinc in there, your magnesium, your digestive enzymes, that's okay if you choose to do it that way. There are obviously more intricate ways, but really, like, let's not draw straws here. If you're taking your nutritional supplements, you're doing a fantastic job. So um, the one we use is called Daily Digestive Enzymes. We can't link it up, but everything I recommend, of course, um, you can find it at stephencabral.com. You'll be able to find it there, so no problem at all. But again, feel free to use your favorite company. Digestive enzymes help to break down the food with greater ease. It's that easy. Okay. Number two is this, with your meal, try to include some rosemary or Mediterranean-based spices. Now, it could be Middle Eastern spices too, it could be, you, I mean, however you want to look at it, but let me name a few for you. You want to be looking at using rosemary, it's one of the best ones out there, almost, I would say like almost nobody cooks with it, but it's so great to add to so many different meals. I mean, you could add it to meat, you could add it to fish, you could add it to, you know, whatever you want. You could add some rice if you want, but it's the rosemarinic acid. We actually use this in our mold protocol because it's so potent with killing yeast, fungus, and mold. So I'm a huge advocate of rosemary. Um, I would definitely try to add some to your meal. Oregano is another great one. Cloves is fantastic for the blood sugar as well. Thyme could be a great one too. And then also your hot spices, so cayenne, even just, again, cayenne pepper flakes, a little cayenne pepper uh, is great as well. So one of the reasons why these spices are so fantastic is they actually activate something. It's a, it's a receptor called PPAR. All right, so peroxome proliferator activated receptor. And what it does is something called PPAR alpha. Some people refer to it as that because what it does is it starts to be activated when the body is able to begin to tap and do body fat or what's called uh, lipase or adipose tissue to a greater degree. And that only really happens when the body meets a better level of blood sugar and also inflammation and cortisol in general. So what we're looking at is these spices, believe it or not, help to get you into that state faster, help to activate the PPAR alpha to a greater degree, and that's why they're excellent to cook with besides their anti-inflammatory nature, okay? So that's why to add spices to your meal. The third one is apple cider vinegar. My highest recommendation is to look for, look for raw apple cider vinegar. We typically use Bragg's, but we've used other local-based brands as well. Just You just want a good quality organic raw apple cider vinegar, okay? It's fermented, um, start small. So if you've never used it before, just put one teaspoon in three, four, five, six ounces of water, okay? Eventually you can work up to one tablespoon in about eight ounces of room temperature water, and you can drink that water throughout your meal. That'll be your one glass of water, because typically you don't want to over dilute the contents of your stomach. Best to drink water 30 minutes plus before a meal, and then about an hour after a meal. During the meal is just for sipping some water to be able to mix with the food. If you mix apple cider vinegar with that, or even after a meal, it can better help regulate what's called postprandial glucose levels. What does that mean? It's your body's ability to keep blood sugar levels stable even after a meal. So that's absolutely phenomenal. That was tip number three, a little apple cider vinegar in some water. Do feel free to add a little lemon to that as well because lemon can activate that PPAR at the same time. So squeeze lemon over your food or lime uh, or feel free to add it to your water. Also great for the liver. Okay, next one is taking a walk for 20 minutes or even some light cardio. Light cardio doesn't mean going for a run. Light cardio is getting on an exercise bike, um, going for a brisk walk, a very light jog if you wanted to, but really ideally it's a walk, a brisk walk, or some light biking. So that's it. So again, like if you like to watch TV after dinner, maybe hop on a little exercise bike and watch TV or your iPad or whatever it is at the same time. 
Even better, get outside, try to get some fresh air, look at that setting sun that's gonna help it sleep that night. That will help again with what's called postprandial glucose levels, not letting the blood sugar levels spike too high, which then is gonna enable you to produce more of that AMPK, as well as getting you into a greater state of digestion before bed and eventually autophagy, which helps to clean up the body. So that was tip number four. The fifth one is having a cup of hot ginger tea to end your night. Now, again, you can squeeze some lemon to that if you want, or even a little, add a little bit of your ACV. That's okay. I would actually just say, keep it simple. Keep it how I've laid it out. Just have a cup of ginger tea while you're uh, seated on the couch or hanging out, whatever it is that you're doing. That's going to help finish off that digestion. It's amazing for being able to even soothe um, the stomach, being great for liver, as well as kidney-based detoxification. It's a powerful uh, anti-cancer herb. So ginger tea is one of the best ones out there. Companies that I love are, um, my favorite company is probably Traditional Medicinals for ginger tea, but Organic India is another great brand. There's a lot of great brands out there, but just look for your organic ginger tea and that can be an excellent one. So those are five ways to get into a fasted state faster after meals. I think this is the most important time to do it is definitely after dinner, but you could absolutely replicate this uh, with any of your larger whole food-based meals. Doesn't need to be done for the smoothies, but certainly uh, for a lunch or a dinner would absolutely be fantastic. Things that I love to be able to add, uh, not only for myself, but I talk about with my private clients all the time. So hopefully this was helpful. Again, if it was, do feel free to share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.